Everett, master of machines. Join me as I check out a spectacular pair of early Mustangs belonging to a lucky man that's living the dream. Then I get to drop the roof on the convertible, take it for a spin, enjoy the sunshine and the wind through my hair. And don't forget to subscribe, like and comment because your valued support helps us keep this show on the road. Neville Richards, always wanted a Mustang. Took him 45 years to get there, now he's living the dream. Neville, fantastic to be here. It appears you're very passionate about the Ford Mustang. Tell us where that all began. Glenn, it started for me when I was about 16 years of age. The Mustangs were released and for me that just left an everlasting impression on my mind in the form of a Wimbledon white car with a bright red interior. So that was effectively the car that Ford used for most of their promotion. Exactly right, and I've never forgotten it. And as a matter of fact, um, it was, you know, 45 years since that day that um, I was able to achieve my first Mustang in the garage for myself. So, and that was in the form of the GT Fastback closely followed by the convertible, so I'm very happy. But it took a long time. And I believe you do actually have another car in the build at the moment? Yes, I do, Glenn. I was able to get a, a good sound-bodied car out of the US and got that in the build at the moment, and it's Wimbledon white, bright red interior, and uh, it's about two weeks away from finishing the build. So effectively, you've acquired the car that you dreamt about all those years ago, the exact same spec of car and colour and all. Absolutely, Glenn. It's a, it's a recreation of that dream I had a, a, an awful long time ago. Tell us about this spectacular ivy green 66 Fastback you've got here. Yes, Glenn. It was a, it was a, a dream car that I had in mind for a long time and was able to do a, a ground up restoration, rotisserie build, 289 Windsor. Created something that at the end of the day was pretty special to me. I mean, for me with Mustang, it doesn't get much better than the early model in the Fastback and GT, does it? That's right. It's a fairly rare car these days. They're not that common anymore and uh, harder to source. So to get that one uh, to the standard that it is, I'm very pleased with. And I do love the red wall tyres. They offset fantastically against the green, along with the style steel wheels, don't they? Look, just those few little extra uh, things that you can achieve, Glenn. Uh, set the car apart from a lot of others. It's uh, the style and it's an absolute head turner wherever you take the car out on the road and there's nothing better than dialing the radio into 289 and going for a cruise. <laughs> That's the best type of music isn't it? It's the best in the world. Tell us about the convertible. Has it been a build, a full build? Yeah, it's a factory restoration uh, job, Glenn, and to achieve a convertible of that standard and uh, a full restoration GT, I think it makes it again a fairly special car. Well, that thing just oozes class in vintage burgundy with the white, doesn't it? It's an absolute pleasure to get in, drop the hood down, 60s and 70s type music, and go for the best cruise of your life. So you're going back in time? Love it, Glenn. I prefer to buy backwards than forwards. <laughs> So the best thing you can do is take the cover off the car, turn the key, and go for the best drive of your life. And when you're back home, all your worries are gone. It's the best therapy session you could ever have, Glenn. Mustangs are fairly common amongst enthusiasts, but there's a reason for that, isn't there? Well, absolutely, Glenn. I think that they, when uh, they were first created, the style uh, set itself uh, to be unique in the world of motoring, I believe so. Well, in an era where cars were big and bulky and powerful, to have a compact small car, if you like, with a V8 would have been a pretty punchy thing in its time, and you can see why they were so popular. Absolutely, Glenn. The, uh, the style and power work ratio was absolutely on the money the first time and made them so popular throughout the world, basically. Nineteen sixty six Ford Mustang GT convertible. Presses all those buttons for me, an epic looking piece of machinery. And the vintage burgundy with the white looks absolutely spectacular. 
the roof down on a beautiful sunny day. I'm loving it. Absolutely awesome. And the Ford Mustang story dates back to 1964, when the very first model was released, around mid-year. It was an epic moment in time. Ford wanted to design a small, lightweight car that seated four, had a floor shift, had all types of options, and was under two and a half thousand dollars. Well, guess what? They achieved that, and that's where the Mustang was born. They expected to sell something like 100,000 units in its first model year. Well, they got a little bit of a surprise, didn't they? Because these babies sold over 400,000 in that first year. And within an 18 month period, they produced a million Mustangs. Absolutely epic success. They had six cylinder option, the 260 small block V8 in the very first model, stemming through to the 289 up to 1966. A fantastic little engine combination too. With 200 horsepower two barrel variants, going through to the eight code four barrel 225 horse engine. I've driven them all, and the 225 horse engine doesn't make a lot more power, but it does make more induction noise. And that's what we all love, don't we? <laughs> One of my favorite options is the K-Code. Now the K-Code was a 271 horsepower fire-breathing engine. Had a solid camshaft, bigger carburetor, increased compression, balanced internals, all sorts of goodies to make that extra power. They revved up hard and they went really well. Yeah, there was a huge buying frenzy when the Mustang was first released and Ford put a lot of effort into marketing. In fact, only days before its official release, they had ads on every major network over there running at night. There were people lined up at the dealerships. You couldn't move. In fact, they sold 22,000 units in the very first day. That is absolutely unbelievable. There were people sleeping at the dealerships inside their cars that they purchased to make sure that their check cleared and no one else got the car the very next day. There's even a story where a guy was driving a truck, running past a dealership, got sidetracked by this epic Mustang that had just been released and ran through the showroom with his truck. Unbelievable. So they're a massive success and no wonder. You know, as much as I love all the Mustang range, I do keep coming back to these early, more compact models. They're very nice, compact and tight to drive. Good power to weight ratio. And there's nothing like the sound of that nice little growling, snarling 289 V8. And the GT model, awesome car. Badging, stripe work, different instrumentation, fog lamps in the front grille assembly, great looking car. Don't you love this thing with its vintage burgundy, white stripes, style steel wheels, it really is a beautiful package and looks fantastic with the roof down. Imagine this, cruising down the foreshore, down the beach on a beautiful day with the roof down, it just doesn't get any better. And driving a convertible is an entirely different experience to any other type of car. I always thought I needed muscle, I always thought I needed power. I was wrong. With the roof down, it's another world. And you want to try driving them at night time on a beautiful, clear summer night. You look up at those stars, there is just nothing like it. It is an epic experience and I highly recommend it. Thanks for watching and we'd really appreciate it if you'd like and comment on this video. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and click the notifications bell because there's a lot more content coming your way.